Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Laney Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host this evening. Hopefully, y'all are all doing well. I didn't think I was going to be able to have a live uh, class tonight. We have, um, it's raining and everything outside, and it was screwing with my uh, internet. It's been just kind of a terrible drizzle for the last two days, you know, just miserable, wet, but... Um, yeah, I thought, I thought, what's going on? So sorry it took me so long to pop in here. We're just right on time. Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, and uh, to capture cross view preview of the 3D component. Uh, all right, I can already see some people have got uh, some questions and stuff. We'll get into those in just a moment. Tonight we're going to start a uh, series of uh, a project uh, build. Uh, we're going to keep these kind of short and concise, but we're going to build a uh, a project and lay out the parts and components for a uh, dartboard cabinet, a really nice, uh, elegant dartboard, dartboard cabinet uh, that we could, uh, you know, have in our game room or a house or, you know, uh, out by the pool, whatever the case may be. Uh, there are some beautiful dartboard cabinets available, you know, online for sale, and they can range uh, in the hundreds of dollars, uh, you know, uh, I mean, just uh, quite expensive. So um, I thought, uh, well, this would be a good opportunity to make one. And uh, since there's different components and different things, we're going to be using different sheets of material. Uh, so we'll get to use some of the new features in version 11 on laying out those sheets and stuff. And um, we'll uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Brooke says your audio is echoing here. Is anybody else experiencing any audio issues on your end? Let me know before we get started. Testing one, two, three. Is anybody experiencing any audio issues? Uh, Brooks, you may have to have a set of headphones on or something. It might be coming out of your speakers. I'm not sure, but let's find out uh, if anyone else is having any echo issues or anything with their audio. Uh, Brooks, make sure you're not listening to me on your phone and your computer or something like that. Um, I don't know uh, what would cause an echo. Um, let's see here. Uh, hey, Lainey, didn't you mention that there's a way to capture a cross view profile of a 3D component? Um, Brooks, uh, explain to me what you mean by a cross view uh, capture of the component. I don't know if it's the same thing that you're referring to on the email that you sent me about segmenting or what have you, but uh, uh, let me know what you mean about a cross view um, because if you're talking about like an ISO layout or something like that, I think we talked about that in a class and all that stuff, but uh, unfortunately uh, you'll have to get on me one-on-one -on, -one on that one. I'm not gonna get sidetracked tonight. We need, we got a certain time limit we gotta stick to and stuff. Um, you, you got my email, you emailed me before Brooks uh, and uh, we can go from there. Um, okay. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of uh, good looking uh, cabinets out there and um, they are, they are, uh, uh, can, can get quite expensive and everything. And I thought, you know what, that would be a great project to, to kind of lay out. And I've got an idea for one that I would like to go with. So without that, with, without uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and get over to the software. Uh, which I believe is going to be on camera two. There we go. And let's get me down in the lower left hand corner here. Okay. All right. So um, let's, uh, I'm going to jump into um, SketchUp really quickly to kind of give you an idea of what I'm looking to do uh, on this cabinet. Um, and what I'm thinking of is on the door of the cabinet, I either want to do some type of 3D carving or I want to do some type of inlay. 
and I'm thinking that this is going to have some kind of theme to it. Uh, I think we'll go with like a U.S. Marines or something like that. Just kind of a, you know, just something to give it kind of a theme. And I was either going to, um, on the door, let me open this door here. Uh, it would help if I, uh, let's select the right part here. There we go. And now let's rotate that. So on the door, when it opens, I was thinking about on one door having a recess kind of uh, pocket. And on the other door, either the medallion that's going to make up the front door, either it's going to be part of the front door and it's all going to be carved at one piece. Or better yet, it may just be uh, we create uh, kind of a pocket cut and inlay this medallion in. Uh, so that uh, when the um, door closes, you know, it'll uh, fall into that recess. Uh, so again, you know, when the door opens, you have one door here. Let's go and select this door. You know, when they open on the inside, there's going to be, uh, oops, let's, uh, Select the right door there. On the inside, there's going to be, you know, chalkboards in here for uh, keeping score and things like that. Uh, but I'm thinking that, um, you know, when the doors close, that medallion will overlay both doors and stuff. And uh, I think that's going to be, you know, nice looking. At the top here, uh, there's going to be some crown molding, uh, and down the sides uh, here, there are going to be some kind of uh, raised text type V carving or what have you. So this is kind of uh, the general start, just a rough sketch in SketchUp, uh, just to kind of give a 3D view. Now the joinery on the uh, frame itself, uh, these white pieces here. Uh, we're going to just use some pocket holes. Many of you are being, as some of you are woodworkers. Uh, most of you should be in some form or fashion. Consider yourself kind of a woodworker. Uh, for the joinery, uh, we're gonna use pocket hole joinery. Uh, and uh, uh, for the uh, sides to secure to the top and bottom of the frame, it's gonna be an additional piece at the top that the crown molding will get attached to and we may do something a little bit decorative with the doors. Uh, haven't gotten that far as far as the sketch goes, and uh, but this is kind of the concept, uh, just a rough uh, you know concept of this. And so if we go back over to the Vetric, I've got things kind of uh, started to lay things out and and see what all needs to be done. Uh, we, uh, my first thought was to do kind of uh, nice uh, stick and frame doors that are going to be, that we're going to carve. They'll look like uh, almost like kind of uh, paneled doors, um, and uh, or they could just be flat. Um, there are some really, uh, uh, really nice. Uh, uh, design ideas. There's so many design ideas and everything out there, but uh, I kind of like this one with the overlaying door, uh, with the medallion that overlays, and uh, we're going to go from, you know, with that kind of concept and stuff. Now, the dartboard itself uh, is going to be 17 and 3 quarters inches in uh, diameter. Uh, so, the dartboard itself, um, and there's a lot of places to resource, a, you know, dartboards. We have a place here in town, uh, you know, like a Play It Again Sports or a Dick's Sporting Goods and or, or things like that. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of places where you can, you know, Amazon, where you can buy some really nice dartboards. Um, I've got, uh, I use steel tip darts uh, when I throw, but you know, of course, this could be an electronic dartboard cabinet, whatever the case may be. But uh, our dartboard is going to be 17 and three quarters. That's the, uh, the diameter of it. And so therefore our cabinet has to kind of reflect, uh, you know, uh, that size. So what I have here is in our job layout, 
I have a cabinet that is 25 and a half inches tall uh, and uh, it's going to be 24 and a half inches wide uh, as far as the overall cabinet itself uh, 24 and a half inches wide and um, the thickness on the material the material is going to vary like I said we're using different sheets uh, and things but for the model that I'm going to inlay into the door uh, it is going to be you know around one inch one and a half inch thick so I'll just go with a one inch thick model for that so that's going to be my layout in here but each one of my sheets are going to have different thicknesses uh, the sheet for the crown molding that we're going to cut because we're going to make our own molding uh, and uh, the uh, panels for the doors and then some of the you know most of the uh, like the, our top piece and, and bottom piece of our frame that can be cut on the table saw we don't need to use a CNC for that we can use our table saw to cut down those top and bottom boards uh, we'll cut down the two side boards of the frame but we're gonna be bringing those over to the table to do some carving on there I think I'm if I'm gonna do kind of a marine logo or something here I might have uh, down one side you know like devil dogs or down the other side Marines or something with uh, kind of a text and uh, and all so we'll lay all that out as we go all right so uh, the medallion itself uh, let's go ahead and I'm, I'm gonna be referencing off the machine bed for my Z zero position and I will be starting at the bottom left corner. Uh, that's how my table is set up uh, to work off the bottom left corner uh, with my quick set zeroing tool. And uh, I am working on a digital wood carver 2440 unit. And notice here I have the model resolution set to maximum, uh, kind of um, a really high resolution because I'm going to be either building models at some point in this project. Uh, or uh, you know uh, working with models and I want a high resolution uh, generally we only have a default of you know standard high and very high uh, if we hold the shift key down when we click create new job or create new project uh, that'll give us our two additional options of extremely high and maximum I'm using maximum in this case uh, for this project and uh, because uh, I want my models that I build to have a high quality uh, and everything and um, but that would be only if you're really creating models if you're gonna be importing your models in and stuff you want a very high resolution at least and everything but you cannot change the resolution of the model that you're importing or that you purchased or whatever the case may be okay uh, so uh, let's click OK and we'll get into our job setup here. Now, my actual medallion uh, here is not going to be 17 and three quarters. I've got this circle here, kind of. This is uh, basically the dartboard. If you look at the bottom right of the screen over here, you may be able to see the text where it says the width and the height. But let's go over to the size box so you can see here. This uh, this circular layout here is kind of my dartboard, if you will. Um, uh, so the medallion's not going, the overlaying medallion is not going to be that big. I'm thinking it's going to probably be about 15 inches uh, in size and everything. So if I were to lay that out uh, with a 15 inch circle and uh, get that in there, um, I'm going to now start organizing all of this. So I will um, select these two vectors here. I'm going to right click on them and move them to a new layer and I'm just going to call this uh, my left door vectors okay I'm going to select the two on the right here I'm going to uh, move them to a new layer call this my right door vectors my larger circular profile I'm gonna move that to its own layer that is just the uh, uh, simulated dart board okay and uh, I'll make that kind of a red color uh, so that uh, it uh, stands out a bit but this here um, this I will move to its own layer this is gonna be my 
Uh, I'll let, I think I'm gonna do it as an inlay versus making the right side door all of it one piece. We could do that. We could literally carve out of one big panel this whole model where it's one solid piece where I'm not inlaying a piece in. But I think that would overcomplicate it when we could uh, cut the nice pockets uh, for the inlay to sit in. And, uh, and I'm going to attach it to one side so that I still have that overlay feature, you know, when we open it up, it's gonna come back and close into that pocket on the left side. Uh, so this is gonna be my, I'm gonna call it a medallion. Medallion, I think I spelled that right. Medallion, yeah. Uh, inlay vector, we'll call it that. Let's fix that word inlay. All right, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, just kind of make this a, an orange color for right now uh, just to you know uh, differentiate it from everything else now over here at the right I've got kind of a simulated piece of uh, crown molding I'm we're gonna draw and create our own you know just in case you're ever curious of that uh, we'll um, uh, we're gonna do that and draw our own uh, lay out a nice profile for some crown molding and all uh, but this is basically, if I was looking at the cabinet from the front view, this is the, basically what the front view would look like, minus the crown molding trim and everything at the top, right? Uh, and, uh, and all. So um, what I want to do now is, uh, we can get rid of this circle, we don't need it here anymore, is I actually wanna start laying out my sheets. We're gonna kinda start getting organized and laying out the different sheets of material and then laying out the parts for those sheets. Now my sides, uh, my side frame boards, they're gonna be five and a half inches wide uh, by 25 and a half inches tall. So, um, and uh, what I will do is, uh, let's go ahead and go into our sheets here and let's add a new sheet and this is going to be our board that i'm going to cut our our door frames on now these boards are already going to be cut down to size i'm going to take them over to the table saw uh, i'm going to cut them to their finished size and everything so that way uh the top and bottom not doing anything with that going to put some pocket holes in it and everything for the the you know the hardware but the two sides i'd like to kind of do something on the sides of the box that uh, can be seen from the side with maybe some decorative word carving and everything. Um, and uh, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, Big Daddy Fish. Hey, Laney, just upgraded to version 11. Still working on the download. Excellent, Big Daddy Fish. Uh, if you ever have any questions or need help with that, let me know. Um, live now, isn't it? Yeah, we are live uh, now for uh, Steve Kruthis. Thanks for popping in. Uh, and for those of you, some, you know, I get comments uh, after the videos are done about closed captioning. I do not believe closed captioning is available while I'm doing a live video. Now, if I recorded this video and I uploaded it, then closed captioning, you know, I could upload a script with that for the closed captioning so the timing's right. Or I could let uh, YouTube add its own captioning and the half the time, you know, depending on someone's accent or the, how clearly they talk, the words might get a little bit jumbled. But I don't think closed captioning is available while I'm live. I'm not sure uh, on that feature. I do not believe it is an available feature uh, while I'm live. So for those of you that asked, hey, can you turn your closed captions on while you're doing your videos, uh, you know, just in case we don't speak your native language. Um, I've got closed captioning on, but I don't think it's available during a live stream. That is something I'm trying to uh, figure out. Okay, um, let's see here. Yes, there is spell check on the new version 11. That's kind of a new feature. The one thing that I, 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 I'm putting the word out to Vetric is uh, auto save. We need an auto save. Uh, you know, something where we can set where it auto saves every 10 minutes or 15 minutes because I've been in, you know, areas or times in the storms and all I'll be designing, forget to hit save, you know, and then all of a sudden power goes out and all that work is gone, right? So we need an auto save. And speaking of saving, uh, once I get this sheet set up, I'm going to go back and save this because it says new at the top, meaning I have not saved this project and what I've done so far. But let's get this sheet edited. 
And for this sheet, uh, I'm gonna be cutting it out of boards. And like I said, uh, they are 25 and a half inches in length and my length is gonna run along my X axis by five and a half inches tall, basically a typical one by six. Um, and uh, it's gonna be three quarter inches uh, thick. My setup, as far as uh, that sheet is concerned, oh, sorry, I had the hiccups. That my setup, as far as that sheet is concerned, uh, is going to be the oh, the same. Sorry, I had the hiccups, folks. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me get something to drink. I don't know where they came from. Okay, so um, for uh, sheet two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this my um, frame side, frame sides, right, for my frame sides. Um, the main sheet uh, that I have laid out, that is just, um, uh, that is just my layout, right? So I'm going to, you know, this uh, 24 and a half by 25 and a half uh, by one inch. That's just my kind of my main layout board that I'm working on. Any other components like the crown molding, trim, the side panels that are going to get carved, those are going to be on their own sheets. The door panels uh, will be on their own sheets and everything. So uh, for this uh, main sheet here, uh, we'll just kind of leave it sheet one. And let's go ahead and add another sheet. Now my doors uh, themselves, the door panels, uh, they are 12 and a quarter by 25 and a half tall. Um, so for uh, sheet two, let's edit that. And uh, they are going to be, again, uh, 25 and a half inches tall. So that, again, they're gonna run along my X axis uh, and they are uh, 12 and a half, 12 and a quarter, 12 and a quarter, too many decimal points, 12 and a quarter inches wide. And they also are going to be three quarters of an inch thick. All right, cool beans. Uh, and uh, we'll click okay on that. <clears throat> and on that sheet two, Let's rename that and we're gonna call this our uh, door panels. Sheet one, I'm just gonna rename that, right click and rename that. Uh, I'm just gonna call this my uh, layout panel for right now, okay? So when I have, you know, I have the different sheets active and everything here and so uh, when I, you know, uh, activate it, activate that sheet, that will be the sheet that I'm working on at the time, okay, uh, and everything. So what I'm going to do is on my layout panel, I'm going to activate that uh, as uh, my main layout panel. And I'll just turn off the other panels for right this moment, those other boards. We'll get to those in just a moment. Um, now... The model, the 3D model itself, that's going to be its own sheet. And like I said, it's going to be 15 inches uh, in diameter. Uh, I am going to uh, carve it probably, I'll probably glue up a panel that is about roughly 16 by 16 to give myself a little bit of clamping room and stuff. And the model is going to get carved and cut out. Um, I am going to go ahead and uh, go with about a one inch thick uh, model one inch thick, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, so let's go ahead and add that in. Uh, this will be my uh, medallion, medallion, we'll call it medallion panel. And did I just screw up? Hold on a second. I tried to I rename my, uh, no, that's it. That's it. it just uh, made it the, I got to edit it, edit. And this one is going to be 16 inches by 16 inches. I'm going to glue up a panel. I think I'm going to do it in a nice wall, uh, not walnut, uh, a nice maple. 
to give it like a nice contrast uh, coming out uh, 16 by 16 by one inch uh, because I think it's either gonna be a nice maple or a nice cherry for the medallion uh, I'm not sure um, because I'm thinking that my uh, cabinet itself is either gonna be I think it's gonna be walnut is what I'm gonna be making it out of um, and all so uh, I think that what I'm going to do is uh, on the side panels uh, I'm going to have kind of like a square inlay uh, nice uh, square strips you'll see that when we draw it here in a minute of uh, some maple strips uh, inlaid in uh, to that uh, panel uh, and then when you do the carving you know it'll be in the maple uh, and everything and it'll have that nice walnut trim where it's kind of inlaid in um, or I could just glue up my board you know and uh, you know kind of frame it in with ma with with walnut and maple but it's gonna be easier for me to inlay a piece in there alright so uh, this is uh, going to be my uh, my medallion panel there and uh, all right, so we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of our sheets and go back to our drawing tools. We are gonna start with the medallion, getting it imported and everything in. Uh, before we do, uh, let me answer a quick question. Um, okay, just downloaded VCar Pro. Why didn't they give me 11 rather than 10.5? Uh, Steven, you got to go into your account, log into your account, uh, and because you're a new customer, uh, you just got your software and everything. Uh, go into your account, and uh, version 11, if it's VCar Pro, I think VCar Pro 11 has come out now. Uh, they were kind of segmenting it out, but I believe VCar Pro 11 is out now, and you've got to go in and, and download version 11 uh, from your account on vetric.com, V-E-C-T-R-I-C.com. So you'll need to download that and install it. Okay, uh, hey Lenny, do you know the difference between saving post-processor G-code inch tap and G-code arcs inch tap? Um, so uh, G-code inch tap is basically, it, it, it's mostly linear. It doesn't support helical arcs. Um, and as of, I think it was version 9.5 that started supporting helical arcs. I think we've talked about that in past classes. Helical, we talked about it in the Understanding G-Code class. Helical arcs basically kind of has a center point that it kind of revolves around. It says, okay, from this center point, cut from here to here. And you know, it's a nice segment of cut. Versus a standard linear cut, which is kind of a G1, uh, which is, you know, cut from here, 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 all the way down, you know, that arc or what have you. So the difference between uh, G-code inch tap is uh, it's it's linear G1 uh, kind of linear cuts you know segmented lines you know uh, for each turn you know each movement it's got to make versus arcs if your program if your design if you created you know arcs and everything it will support that G2 and G3 uh, for those helical arcs and stuff um, so that's the difference between those two uh, coolly uh, let's see here. And uh, Sylvia, I don't see words going across the live screen. Um, yeah, no, I don't think closed captioning is available during the live stream, but after the live stream, when the video has a chance to process and stuff, uh, the closed captioning will get added and all. Um, Yeah, and uh, let's see here. Um, does the linear post processor pixelate? No, no. Uh, it's um, you know if you're talking about as far as the 3D and everything, no, it, it, there's not going to be any pixelation involved with that. Uh, the only time you're going to have pixelation or or basically kind of a rough you know cut model is if your design if you have pixelation in that 3d model you know when you import it, if it's a low resolution or you create it in a low resolution then it's going to kind of pixelate and stuff and that pixelation will translate over to the quality of a cut 
So if there's translation in there, kind of technically, I guess the answer to that would be yes, because it's going to follow those line segments, you know, for each of that cut, you know, and it's either going to be a smooth line segment or it's going to be kind of a rough line segment, depending on the pixelation and how bad it is uh, and all. Uh, so, but yeah, it's going to pick up those line segments and stuff. All right, let's get back to it. Um, and uh, let's uh, get back here. So we were in the process of uh, importing the medallion. Now this model file that I'm importing, it's gonna be an STL. It's a very large model file, so uh, it's gonna take a moment before I, uh, cause it, it kind of somewhat freezes up the, uh, the, uh, the Aspire a little bit as it's importing in. So before I lose anything that I've done, I'm gonna go ahead and save my work. So let's go file, save as and uh, I'll just put it in my downloads folder for right now. It's kind of where I keep all my recent projects until I can organize them a little bit better. Uh, I am gonna call this uh, custom dart board cabinet parts, or yeah, I would just leave it at cabinet. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Let that save and everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into my modeling tools and I'm going to import a component or 3D model. And I'm gonna import uh, this model here. Uh, this model is a big file, so we're gonna give it a second to kind of process itself uh, and stuff. So uh, it's gonna take just a second to kind of uh, bring itself in. Um, Let's see here. Did my first sign on DWC and it turned out great. How do I get cursive fonts? Uh, Dafont.com. D-A-F-O-N-T.com. I'll put that in the chat area for you, Stephen. Uh, Dafont.com is a great place to go and download free fonts for both personal and commercial use. Uh, and um, uh, you know uh, they're free downloads and stuff and you can uh, just go to the script and find all kinds of cool script text. Now this model imported in in uh, kind of a millimeters if you will at 495 uh, by uh, 495 but the software is reading it as inches so right now this model is 48 inches thick 495 inches by 495 inches so the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, scale millimeter to inches. Uh, the button scale millimeter to inches so it converts it uh, uh, back to an appropriate size which is about 19 by 19 inches. Um, now remember I said my model is going to be about 15 inches in diameter. So I'm going to go 15 and we're going to click apply. So 15 by 15. I'm going to go ahead and center that model in the uh, on the board it's gonna take a second uh, like I said it's a big file and everything so uh, just have some patience with it it'll get to where it's got to go uh, and uh, now that I've got the model model centered what that means is in my one inch thick material or what have you my model is centered in that board and I want the model above the center line above the Z plane so I want it on the you know the top half here um, and uh, that means I need to now um, position that model and then get it ready for import. So my next uh, option is here is I'm going to click on position and import button. That's going to take me to the positioning screen in version 11. Uh, in the earlier versions, older versions, all of those screens were in one screen. So you had your orientation, position, you know, and then your import at the bottom. Now they've segmented it out into uh, different segments and stuff. Uh, in here, the position relative to the modeling Z plane. So let me turn this board up on its side or this model up on its side so you can see what I'm referring to when I say Z plane. And uh, let me get it to uh, turn here. There we go. And uh, let's see if you can see on the screen. It's with my black background. Uh, Gonna see if I can change my background a bit. Bear with me a second. Let me go in and change my background color for a second for you guys. Uh, let's go with a white background for a moment. Is 
it going to give me a white background? Probably not. There we go. All right. So you see this black line right here that's running down the center of this red box, this red square here. That box is my material. Okay. And that black line represents the zero plane. If I was bringing in a two-sided model, uh, let's say, for instance, I was uh, bringing in this uh, body armor bottle, right? You know, a round model. And I needed half the model to be on the, you know, side one and the other half on side two, like it was a two-sided project or a rotary project or something. Then I would want that model split on that line, that zero plane. But in this case, this is a one-sided model. So I want the model above the zero plane. That means my little slide bar here needs to be slid all the way down to the bottom. Okay needs to be slid all the way down to the bottom and that's gonna slide the zero plane down, put the model above the zero plane, as you can see here. Uh, and we want that model above you know, the zero plane. Now, my model as it stands uh, currently is um, about uh, one and a half inches thick as it is. And remember, I said that I wanted it about one inch thick this is an opportune time for me to trim off, uh, if my model allows for it, this base meat underneath the model here, this base meat, I can trim some of this off. Uh, in Aspire, I have a tool that will allow me to remove uh, you know, more of that back meat material and everything uh, and reduce it uh, without losing the detail. Of my of my model but in vcarve desktop and pro I don't have that ability so now is the opportune time for me to take off some of that back meat to bring my model down to roughly about a one inch thick piece uh, where I'm not actually scaling it down and affecting the detail of the model right so what I'm gonna do here is on my depth below top um, I'm going to uh, change this to one inch and bring that model down slightly. Give it a second to regenerate itself. There we go. Uh, and basically that bottom half inch area uh, is going to be, I've got it checked here to discard all the data and all the model below the zero plane, below that black line. Get rid of everything that's below that back line. Uh, if this was um, you know, a two-sided project, then I would have the box checked to create both sides, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, we wanna, we, I wanna remove this material. Now I need to be careful in some instances, I might actually be removing you know, my model inside of my model, the inside, all the detail and stuff on the inside, it might be kind of carved down and stuff, and it might be below that one inch mark, right? And if I cut off the whole end, I could be deleting some parts of the inside of my model. I'm not gonna know that yet until I flip this back along its Z here. So I'm gonna click in this top right corner my little Z button so I can see the model face on, uh, head on. Give it a second again have a little bit of patience with these large stl or obj or, or you know type model files uh you know sometimes depending on your processor and things uh it's going to take some time to react and in my case uh it's right now trying to process turning that model around in a top orientation uh and it's going to take a second to get there uh I have a pretty decent processor, but um, uh, it still t it takes its toll because my video stream that I'm doing is also using my processor. My video that's getting rendered and everything and sent out is kind of going through that and stuff as well. The video capture, it's, not, it's actually not going through my GPU, it's going through my CPU. So uh, we'll give it a second to uh, flip itself around here. And we'll have a little bit of patience. Um, all right, it's a perfect time for me to grab something to drink. Okay, 
process, process, process. It's trying. It's trying to return on. You can see it kind of almost flicker. Uh, it's 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 working on it. And uh, I probably should have just left it in the Y um, and then just imported the model and showed you what I was trying to show you. But I thought while we were on this screen, we would, uh, you know, uh, go from here. Um, let me see here. And uh, I don't, I, I said two weeks ago that I was going to do kind of a tips and tricks uh, video uh, and stuff. Uh, and one of the things that you guys were asking about, uh, you know, about curves and stuff and models and, and everything, not models, but uh, just vectors in our carving and your G codes and stuff, um, we can, on those line segments and stuff, uh, we could turn those uh, line segments, you know, into arcs where they're much smoother cuts for creating nice profile cuts and things. I'm not going to get into that here because you're not going to understand what I'm talking about unless I can show you. Uh, but I think I'll do that next week's class. Uh, we'll we'll um, we'll do kind of a tips and tricks. All right, come on now. We're, we're, we've played around long enough. Let's go ahead and uh, get this to uh, regenerate itself. Come on now. There we go. Okay. It's updating the model. There we go. All right. So in my case on the model here, um, on the model here, I did not cut away any of my backer board or my back material or any of my design uh, when importing that uh, model in. Um, all I did was cut off that half inch on that back end, right? Uh, so basically, if I look at the properties of this model, um, I should be right at about one inch thick. And that's what I want. That's what I want, that one inch thick. And I did that all during the import, you know, getting it below the zero plane and just having it lop off that back half. And, you know, you see my, my inner sides are cut down in my material, right? Uh, you know that the Eagle and Globe, the United States Marine Corps, and all that stuff—it's cut down in that material. And if it would have been cut deeper, and if I would have lopped off that back half, I could have been actually cutting away the detail in the middle, right? So we just got to be mindful of what we know. It'll show us right away if we cut out any of the design. You know, as soon as we import it in, and we'll just have to re-import it. And you know, we're not going to be able to remove that much material off. But I was able, there was a lot of base meat on the back side of that model. Uh, and I was able to lop off that uh, bottom half inch and, uh, you know, give me a one inch thick model without scaling it down. And, 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 you know, when I scale a model, when I scale and size the model down, whether I scale it along the X, Y, X, Y, and Z all scale together. Or I could just change the Z height, you know, I could, uh, you know, flatten it out kind of thing. But if I scale it, I have the potential of losing detail. I'm sacrificing detail when I'm, when I'm scaling the model down and stuff. So if I can remove waste material without sacrificing detail, that's the way we wanna go to get us started, right? Now, if I needed to size this down to three quarters of an inch thick, now I'm only sizing it down by a quarter of an inch. I'm not going to lose a whole lot of detail in the eagle and globe and stuff like that. But if I was at my one and a half inch thick and wanted to go to three quarter, I'm scaling it that three quarters of an inch and I'm losing a lot of detail uh, in that uh, in everything. So hopefully that makes some sense. All right, let's go ahead and uh, close the properties here and we have our model. Uh, that's going to be part of our door medallion and everything. And um, uh, we are uh, good to go here. 
let's make sure that we are in our medallion sheet. That's exactly the sheet that I wanted to be active when I imported the model. I forgot to mention that. Uh, we want that sheet to be active so that it lands on that sheet, our medallion panel uh, and everything. And uh, that is pretty much ready to go uh, as far as um, all I have to do is create the rough cut and the finish cut for the toolpath. Uh, Carl, you know, things are going well uh, with the building and all. It's going to be about six months before construction starts and all, but things are moving forward. If Mother Nature would stop raining and everything, I could get the concrete guys out to get the footers and all done and get the slab in and stuff, you know, and uh, kind of get prepped, get all the electrical, underground electrical done and all that stuff. But uh, it's just been, you know, a miserable, uh, you know, uh, rain here and that's we're kind of in our hurricane season months um uh but uh yeah it's coming along good things are moving forward uh and um websites uh getting uh put together and all that good stuff so i'm happy with that thanks for asking okay uh let's see here so i've got the medallion here um if we could uh, kind of come over here uh, notice that in my tool pass, I can, uh, you know, create the tool pass for all the sheets. You know, I could create the tool pass for a specific sheet. I can break that up and I want to be in my medallion panel here. And for this, I'm going to go into my material setup. I want my, uh, you know, my model is uh, one inch thick, the same size as my material uh, and everything. Uh, but I do want to, I'm going to put that slide bar at the top there. Uh, it doesn't make any difference because it's the same thickness as my material and everything. But um, I do want it at the top, that slide bar. And I'm going to click OK on my material setup. All that looks good. And now I can create my 3D rough cut. Uh, for the model itself, let's go ahead and select that model. Go back into our modeling tab. And I'm going to click on the button to create a vector boundary around the selected model. So basically I'm creating a boundary outline around that model that I can use as you know a vector since I'm going to be cutting that part out and stuff. Now that tool, create a vector boundary around your selected component, that's available in Desktop Pro and Aspire. It's the little button uh, over here on the left that looks like a little sideways spinning top laying on its side with a blue line around it, the icon um, and stuff uh, in your software. Now, if I look at my uh, vector, my circle, it looks pretty clean uh, and everything, but sometimes, depending on the model's you know, outer border, sometimes the line could be a little rough and it might just be better to draw the circle, a nice clean circle, rather than, um, rather than you know, have the software trace it and create a kind of a funky line, right? You know, the smoother, the better. All right, so with this, I'm going to use the selected vector as my boundary. I'm going to select from my tool database my quarter inch end mill. And uh, let's uh, grab this quarter inch end mill and bring it over. And I'm going to use the selected vector as the boundary. I am going from my rough cut to my finish cut. I am going to leave about 40 thousandths of an inch of material. That's the default. And it's a good default. So I don't have any reason to change that. Uh, I am going to do a Z level raster. I do not do 3D rasters. They just take too long. And I really, you know, uh, I don't want my end mill getting that close to my 3D model and possibly chipping out my material to where when I do my 3D finish cut and I'm like, you know, where's the nose at or where's this at or what happened to that little piece of the anchor or whatever the case may be. You know, my rough cut being so close on a 3D raster, you know, chipped it away or whatever. Uh, so I do a Z level raster. I'm just want to remove enough material that my finish bit, uh, you know, is not working too hard. Uh, I am going to, uh, you know, clean up with a profile cut last. Uh, my raster angle, uh, this is new in version 11. We used to only be able to raster along the X which was zero, raster along the Y, which is 90. Now we can raster at any angle, you know, and sometimes people like rastering along the 45 or what have you because of the way they're grain. We always want to carve with the grain. So uh, in this case for me, it's going to be a zero raster. I'm going to be rastering along my x-axis. The grain of my material is going to be running along the X. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll call this our 
Medallion. I think I'm spelling medallion right. You guys let me know. Um, medallion rough cut. And I will be using a 0.25 EM in mill. And I'm going to calculate that. Now you can name your tool pass whatever you want, or you can use the default name that it comes with it. But we're going to go ahead and calculate that. Um, yeah, Brooks, uh, as far as the tool library, uh, it's the Digital Woodcarver tool library uh, with all the tools and settings and everything already preset that Digital Woodcarver customers can import into their tool database. All right, uh, so our rough cut uh, toolpath is created. Uh, before doing the preview, I'm just gonna go ahead and create the finish. We're gonna kind of keep things moving a little bit here. Uh, again, I'm gonna use the same selected vector as the boundary. On my 3D finish cut, we ha now have the ability to do rest machining. And let me turn off this toolpath here so we can see the model. Um, we have the ability to do what's called rest machining where we can use multiple bits to achieve the detail that we want to achieve. Um, I could start off with an eighth inch tapered ball nose and then come back with a 16th inch tapered ball nose uh, or a 32nd inch tapered ball nose and things. Um, for my model, for the most part, uh, the rope border, the United States Marine Corps, uh, all of that, uh, even parts of the globe and stuff, all of that could be done very well with the eighth inch uh, tapered ball nose bit. But the eagle's uh, feathers and wings and stuff and that tight detail and stuff, um, I'm going to want to, you know, I would want to uh, use a smaller bit uh, for that. And in this case, in my uh, tools here, I have uh, the eighth inch tapered ball nose uh, in there uh, currently right now. And I have the 16th inch tapered ball nose. Uh, we'll go ahead and calculate it with those two bits. Uh, selected vector is the boundary again, making sure that that vector is still selected, which it is. And um, I'm going to, uh, as far as my minimum detail, basically what the minimum detail is, we have a coarse and a fine detail. So if there are little parts that were missed uh, from the previous bit and they were really too small to really worry about, you know, uh, we can have the rest machining bit, the second bit or the third bit, ignore those parts. If we want to get in there and have them really try to get in there and stuff, then that's going to be more of a fine cut uh, in things. Our default is about one thousandths of an inch, 11 ten thousandths of an inch uh, and, and everything. So kind of a midline. And I'm fine with that. I mean, hell, that's a good, that's a good uh, detail <laughs> and everything. Uh, so I'll go with that. And my sixteenth of an inch bit may be a little bit too big for the feathers in the detail, where a thirty second would step up really well. Um, I'm not really going to know that until I calculate the toolpath and preview it, kind of thing. Um, but I believe with this model being fifteen inches, my sixteenth inch taper ball nose will give me you know, a good amount of detail. So um, we can calculate that toolpath and we'll let that run. Um, hey, Mark, how you doing, bud? Thanks for popping in. Good evening, uh, Mark Lindsay. If you guys haven't uh, ever uh, seen any of Mark's videos, go watch him. He does great veteran tutorials like myself. Uh, he focuses on uh, his videos are short to the point, get you right where you need to go. They're great for beginners. Uh, and uh, intermediate and even advanced uh, and uh, they he picks a topic and he focuses on that topic uh, his videos are not two and three hours long like mine uh, so uh, definitely go check out Mark Lindsay's channel on YouTube uh, he's got a lot of great videos uh, in learning on the Vetric software and and different tips and tricks Mark thanks for jumping in my channel tonight and popping in appreciate that uh, let's see here Bruce, you want me to send you our rain? We'll send you our rain. Uh, I'll send you the rain. It's been, man, it's one of those miserable slow rains it's been for the last two days uh, and everything. 
Um, so this is calculating and now because I do have such a high resolution going on and uh, you know I'm working in that maximum 50% resolution it is going to be 50% slower 50 times slower in the preview uh, but also kind of a little bit in the calculation as well uh, it's you know it's really kind of uh, getting that uh, that detail and stuff and everything so um, Mark, uh, I <laughs> sorry, I, didn't, I lose lost my train of thought. Mark, forty-five minutes is short compared to my three, three and a half hour long videos, which I'm working on, guys and girls. I promise I am. Um, but uh, let's get this calculated. Then what we're going to do is we're going to lay out our sideboards for our frame, uh, and uh, and then you know we'll see where we're at with that, uh, and that could be our our uh, you know part end of part one and stuff we're gonna kind of keep things uh, you know nice concise we're already at the 55 minute mark here uh, you know and uh, so I want to kind of maybe hour and a half uh, and all that uh, but uh, we're gonna let this calculate out um, while it's calculating you know I'm kind of in this stuck position basically uh, I gotta let it calculate it out and do its thing because I can't move in and start continue drawing because it's working right now. The software is working, um, uh, but uh, yeah and uh, yeah, Mark. Uh, yeah, I love your videos because you do. Uh, you know, a lot of your videos, your earlier videos. Uh, you know, uh, I think even your later videos and all stuff too. Uh, you do focus on the beginner, and it's great because you know, hey how to use this tool, how to use that tool, you know, how to create this type of tool path, how to create that type of tool path. And it's in uh, even at 45 minutes mark, it's still a digestible uh, time that, uh, you know, they can comprehend. Sometimes searching through my long videos for a particular bit of information could be a little bit uh, daunting to say the least, <laughs> but people do. Uh, I do have a guy that uh, is coming in and he's going to break my videos up into segments so you can actually, they'll be time stamped. He's going to watch all of my videos and uh, uh, edit them all uh, in the, in my, not watch them all, but he's going to edit them all uh, and break them up into time segments so you'll be able to click segments for different sections of the videos. So that's going to be nice uh, and stuff. Um, uh, so cool. Um, We are almost there. It's uh, the it's right. You can see that yellow bar at the bottom of the screen. It's approaching the, you know, the first pass of that calculation. The second pass will be a little bit faster as it goes through, and then, um, you know, the uh, and uh, right now it's just calculating the eighth inch tapered ball nose. It's got to go through and run a second pass to calculate the rest machining uh for the uh smaller bit but we're getting there guys so i'm kind of filling the air so if you have any questions right now is kind of the time to ask to answer some questions uh because all i can do is sit here and either stare at you or talk <laughs> um yeah absolutely uh mark i don't know if you uh heard uh kind of made an announcement and stuff and all uh my other youtube channel uh i'm going to be coming back to full length builds uh, and we're going to be doing projects that involve the CNC and Spindle TV uh, is going to be highlighting the design aspect of the CNC uh, parts that are going to be in the full length build videos on the other channel. So my other channel is going to be full length builds out in the shop start to finish uh, from, you know, rough uh, material to finished product uh, and everything. Um, and uh, in those videos, there's going to be some type of CNC element. Uh, and that's the design aspect of that CNC is going to be just kind of highlighted over in that other video. But the, the actual design aspect is going to be over on uh, this channel. Uh, so people can go if they want to if they want to focus on the design part, they can go watch it. If they want to focus on the full build, they can watch that or they can jump back and forth. So it's going to be pretty cool uh, and all. All right, we are getting there, guys. It is approaching. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's approaching uh, fast, so it's not not fast enough. But you know, again, it all has to do with your processor speed. And my processor again is processing my video. I wish I could get it to process differently, but with my little A10 Mini Pro, it's kind of CPU heavy and stuff. But uh, it is what it is. 
Uh, Camaro, you went to a trade show recently and saw laser CNC machines. Uh, you're able to cut uh, that out with a laser and grayscale. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I've seen, uh, you know, at the trade shows, these nice 4x8 laser machines and all. Oh, man, it's amazing what they do with that and stuff. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, now, if you're talking about laser CNC's where they're actually just like a big ass printer, or you might be talking about, you know, the smaller like our 60 and 90 watts, but I'm talking about the, you know, 2000 watt, you know, and, and things like that. They're pretty uh, massive and stuff. Yeah, great, Mark. See, that's the thing. I'm working on getting the new shop done so I can start doing full length builds. My small shop right now, I could I could start, uh, but man, trying to have the lighting and the camera and stuff there, it's uh, it's it's difficult uh, to having to move everything around all the time and just not have a whole lot of room. Uh, it's a, you know, it's just kind of a tight, quaint space. I'm only in a 12 by 24 building, but it's packed with tools. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we are just we're finishing up the rest machining. Now it's going to be a lot faster than the first toolpath because all it's doing is going back and uh, touching up the detail uh, areas and everything. Mostly kind of going to be in the smaller detail of the eagle and the globe and the anchor and everything. Uh, the larger areas, the rope and stuff. Maybe some of the radiuses it'll go in and touch up those areas and all. Uh, but for the most part. It's kind of focusing that smaller bits, focusing on the finer detail. Now, again, I could add a 30 second in there and go in there and really kind of just go back and all, but I think I'm going to be fine with just the eighth and the 16th inch taper ball nose. The eighth is your go to for you new guys and girls that are just starting 3D carving. Eighth inch taper ball nose, that's kind of your go to bit for many 3D carvings and stuff. Um, but when you start to get into finer detail, then you're going to want a 16th of an inch taper ball nose. And even in your arsenal tools, it's good to have a 32nd inch tapered ball nose and stuff. Um, you know, uh, it's useful for getting into real fine detail. Just understand the smaller the bit, the longer the carve is going to be and stuff and all. So uh, it's uh, wrapping up here and then we can move on to bigger and better things uh, once we get out of uh, this, um, this tool path. Uh, let's see here. Not sure, but it looks like on the inside of the rope and the model is cut through. No. If you're talking about the left side and everything on the model, it looks like it's cut through. No, it's not. Uh, there's meat behind it. There's meat behind it. It's just the orientation and the way it looks and everything. Um, uh, who said that? Uh, Mike. Yeah, it, uh, no, there's no holes in it. You'd be able to see the white uh, through the holes and stuff, or it might be like a little blue triangle or something. Uh, let's see here. Overhead camera mounts, Mark. Uh, uh, Mark, let me know if you have any videos uh, kind of showing off those overhead camera mounts or something, or are you doing those in the new shop? Um, that'd be cool. Uh, Laney, question, what do you import, when, sorry, when you import a 3D model or grayscale, it appears in yellow and gray instead of uh, just black and white uh, and gray. Uh, does the yellow indicate anything different other than uh, just a color setting? No, Jim, um, the, when, we're, when we are creating models, uh, not necessarily just importing, but when we're creating models, uh, when we click on create a new shape or a component, it creates it as a kind of a yellow type model. But the minute we apply that, it turns it into a grayscale. Um, and uh, when we import a model, like when we import, I've never seen, I'll have to look at it in the 2D view. Uh, when this is finished calculating, we'll look at this one in the 2D view. This is gonna be a grayscale in the 2D view. When we're creating models and stuff, um, it's going to create the component with kind of a yellow, yellowish grayscale, yellow scale. I don't know what you want to call it, uh, you know. But once we click apply or create a new component, then it's going to grayscale that that model, you know, for its highs and lows. But no, the colors don't indicate. That's just the way the software is set up uh, and stuff. Um, let's see here, Bruce. You thought twenty-two by forty was small, man. I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have that. I'm going 30 by 35. 
maybe the background were black or uh, would be more clear. Yeah, if the background was black again, it would be more clear because it does look in the, I'm looking at it on the computer screen, in my computer screen, and it looks like it's white over in that bottom left corner uh, and everything, but uh, it's not. It's not. That's just the uh, the the way the uh, computer's picking it up on my um, my cameras and stuff in the screen. Um, come on now. Finish calculating because I I'm running out of breath talking so much. Uh, let's see here. Um, good evening, Laney. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, both. Um, you and Camaro came in. I think y'all just got here a little bit late. Uh, hey, Camaro, I did get your email about uh, coming down to your shop sometime for photography and stuff. Uh, I haven't responded to it, but I got it there uh, for when that time comes. I'm still kind of figuring out what I need to do with that, but uh, I'm, I may hit you up uh, and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, Bob Frell, I like that comment uh, about, you know, uh, what you get out of different, you know, uh, viewers' videos and stuff. So, um, that's awesome and everything. Yeah, Mark, I'm working off a tripod right now, and it's crazy. I put an overhead rail system in. It didn't work out very well. <laughs> I got I to gotta come up with a better idea. Man, there's some really nice projects on uh, these nice uh, camera arms, booms and stuff. Uh, when I get in the new shop, I'm going to be building one. There's some really, really nice projects. A guy did a 3D printed one. Man, it was awesome. All right, come on, Vetrick. We got to move along there, buddy Row. Move along. I don't want to click anything while it's processing. I can tell right, tell you right now that uh, I'm not sure what the new Vetrick V11, how it processes the rest machining uh, and stuff and everything. Um, but looking at, you know, like how long it's take, it's really doing some calculations. In the older method uh, in Aspire of doing rest machining, we would do a tool path with, let's say, the eighth inch bit. We would preview that cut with the eighth inch bit. We would then create a model component from that tool path preview. It would then get inverted, kind of almost, you know, like reversed, if you will, like a negative. Uh, and then we would go over and trace uh, with our with our uh, vector tracing, our trace bitmap tool. We would trace this kind of inverted grayscale, uh, and it would create these vector lines in these detail areas that that didn't that the router bit really didn't carve. And then we would come back and we would have our model with these new vectors. We would create another finished tool path called the rest machining tool path with a smaller bit using those selected vectors as the boundary. Well, we haven't done any of that in this new software. This new software, we add the bits, it's kind of figuring out all the areas. With no boundaries and stuff really selected, other than the main you know, selected vector, um, it's, got, it's looking for those detail areas and everything, and it's kind of doing all this processing. So I have noticed, even in my higher resolution and stuff, it does take an extremely long time to calculate. Uh, I'm hoping that as version 11 matures, uh, these things will be clean. Some of the, you know, the, the way it processes that information stuff will be cleaned up uh, and all because I'd really like to get moving along here right now. We're already an hour and eight minutes in and we're still waiting for this calculation. So come on, move along. Um, let's see here. Uh, Laney, when uh, Spire 11, when you do rest machining, does the software uh, cut over what the bit originally cut? No. Uh, the software just goes back and touches up the areas that it needs to uh, with the smaller bit. Um, so your main tool is going to uh, do the majority of the work, and the rest machining is doing the rest. That's why it's kind of called rest machining the rest of the design. It's only touching up the areas that the larger bit that was previously used could not get to. So no, it's not recutting the whole design over again. Um, pan and tilt. Yeah, I can't move anything while it's uh, 
you know, um, while it's calculating and stuff. So the software is still working its magic and everything. Um, but uh, while, while it's doing that, I can kind of move over and talk a little bit more about this. Uh, let's go into Q. Let me tilt this up here. All right, let me open these doors up. Oops, uh, let's open that one up and let's open this one up. Okay, uh, in the cabinet here, uh, on the inside of the doors, we are going to have a, a, a kind of a recess or we may just screw a chalk panel to it, chalkboard panel. But we're gonna make our own chalkboard panels. Uh, you know, a nice uh, thin piece of eight inch. Uh, I'm gonna use most likely kind of a, a Baltic birch. I'm uh, gonna sand it uh, down to like a 320, uh, really nice fine sanding. Uh, we're gonna prime it, uh, paint it with a Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint. It's really good chalkboard paint. Um, and uh, we're gonna put uh, about two coats on it uh, for the uh, chalkboard. And um, with uh, once the chalkboard paint dries uh, thoroughly and everything, we're gonna take a piece of chalk. Uh, you always prime your chalkboard paint, guys. Uh, if you're ever painting a wall, like for a kid's room or something, and you've done chalkboard paint where they can draw on, don't forget to prime your chalkboard paint. What I mean by that is, is take a piece of chalk on its side and rub that chalk all over that chalkboard. Um, let it sit for a little bit uh, and then you can erase it off um, if you're gonna use wet rags uh, or you know sponges or you know something damp to wash your chalkboard and all then wait at least five to seven days for that chalkboard paint to really cure uh, before you wash it off and all that stuff but prime your chalkboard paint with a piece of white chalk um, and uh, you know, lay it on its side and, and rub it all on, get all in the nooks and crannies and cover the whole thing. And then uh, you know, let it sit for a little bit and then wipe it off you know, with just kind of a, like, you know, erase it, use your eraser and stuff. And then once you're primed, you're ready to go. But if you wanna wash it to where it's a nice black chalkboard when it's not being used uh, and everything, cause it's gonna go from a shiny kind of black to a slate, kind of a dulled slate black, you know, once you prime it. Uh, with your chalk and everything and that's going to keep it so those shadows you know if you don't prime your chalkboard properly uh, your chalkboard paint or what have you even chalkboards uh, you know when you go to erase stuff you'll see like the little ghost image of what was on there like you know you could have the word welcome on there and erase it and you're still going to see a little ghost image of the word welcome and all uh, that that eliminates that by priming your chalkboard so uh, be sure to do that but we're going to have uh, scoreboards on the inside uh, in uh, the um, in the cabinet here, we're going to um, have our uh, let's push pull that. That's going to be one inch thick. All right, let me rotate this. Uh, rotate. Not that way, I don't wanna rotate that way, you goofball. Oh, I don't wanna rotate it at an angle, come on now. Gotta let my sketch up. There we go. That's still at an angle. But anyway, uh, let's move that into place. I don't know why my move tool is not working as much as I'd like it to. There we go. All right, let's scale that up. Okay, we got a crooked... Uh, <laughs> I got a crooked board in there and let's get off that um, so uh, it's gonna be much bigger than that of course I uh, didn't draw it to the right size um, let's scale that up some real quick
Okay. So inside here uh, in our cabinet and everything, we're going to have a uh, two boards that uh, come in for the uh, darts. We have two sets of darts, uh, three darts each. Uh, we're just, it's going to be just a basic uh, three quarter inch by maybe one inch block of wood. We're going to drill a uh, nice uh, 16th inch holes in there. We'll do that at the drill press. We don't need to do that on the CNC. So the darts have a place to, for their blades to kind of stab into. Uh, they're going to have uh, one on each side. And then we, we may do something decorative in here. Um, I was uh, kind of thinking of some corner braces, uh, which we'll draw up in just a minute on all four corners. And uh, my chalkboard is not centered at all. But let's see how Vetric is doing. Still, oh, oh, don't you hate when you click and see that white screen? It scares you to death. Um, I wonder if something's got it locked up. Uh, this is why you save your work, ladies and gentlemen. Anything can happen. Uh, we're sitting there. Um, I clicked when it was already not responding, right? It was processing. And I clicked on the screen, and now it's kind of got that ghosted white look, meaning it's, it's right at the the apex of crashing right it's one thing i don't like about uh you know the vetric uh you know uh crashing on me uh when it's it's processing a lot in the cpu if my cpu can't keep up my computer it's not the vetric's fault um it's uh you know i don't have enough processing power uh for you know uh you know the project detail or whatever the case may be but uh it locks me up or you know it can lock you up and if you click on it and that screen goes over white like it is right now you don't click on it again or else it shuts down you got to start over everything you've done minus what you saved up to right now when I imported the model and everything I believe I saved up to the import so the only thing that I would have lose if I were to crash right now I believe I did I think I did um, that's why autosave is so important uh, Vetric, but um, it could uh, I could just have to redo the tool pass again, right? But I don't want to uh, sit there and take up the time. I may go ahead and crash this on purpose so we can move on to the other projects. Um, but uh, I'm going to give uh, Aspire just a few more minutes of my time and then I'm just going to crash it out and uh, reopen the project. But uh, it is processing still blue night that's for sure it's processing it says not responding at the top it is responding to itself in the background but it's not responding to you so don't just sit there and click 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 you know uh like i did when i switched back over from uh google sketchup to uh aspire i clicked on the screen and uh, just that quickly i locked it up and uh, i knew that was going to happen with my marine model it happens all the time with my marine model uh it's a big model it's a big model file um it is still working yes it is blue knight <laughs> it's still working um it said it was not responding before you change screens yeah it's not responding uh now that doesn't mean it's not responding to us the user right it, it it's on the front end it's not responding but it is still working in the background it's still trying to do you know get processed whatever it's trying to process uh and everything it's just not responding uh, but it's at the point of, uh, of crashing now if you leave it be you know this would be something where you could walk away and come back or whatever and it could you know catch up to itself your computer could catch up and all um, but uh, the you know uh, we don't have that kind of time so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this I'll let it do what it's got to do in the background but I'm going to open up a second instance of the Aspire. <clears throat> and I'm going to hold the shift key down when I click create on a new file. Uh, and on my size, I'm at uh, 24 and a half by 25 and a half. By one and a half, uh, everything is going to be the same here. 
we'll click OK and set that up. And I'm going to open my custom dartboard file. I don't know why. I don't know why I set up a new job when I was going to open up the custom dartboard file to begin with. Uh, but that gets me back here, right? Now my other screen is still processing, right? You know, and everything. But um, I can start working on other things, right? We can move on to other things. Uh, so while that uh, is uh, processing and all, what I'm going to do is let's go in our sheets and let's make our frame sides now. Let's go ahead and get those done. So I'm going to make that the active board. And again, my uh, let's go back to our drawing tools. My uh, frame sides are uh, 25 and a half inches by five and a half inches wide. That's how wide my boards are and all. So I'm going to draw a rectangle outlining the whole perimeter of this board. Oh, I had the hiccups again. Uh, outlining the whole perimeter of this board. And I want to offset this in. Remember I talked about possibly doing like a maple inlay uh, and everything. So what I want to do is I want to offset this inward. And... Um, I'm going to have kind of a one inch border all the way around and then centerpiece is going to kind of be an inlay. So I'm going to just go uh, one inch uh, and I'll delete the original rectangle. Okay. And this is going to be the vector for that inlay. So I'm going to have a walnut board here. I'm going to cut out a pocket uh, and I'm going to inlay a piece of maple in there and then I'm going to carve a design. Uh, so that'll be the vector for the uh, inlay and now I want to put some text in there that's going to get carved into that maple. Um, the text is going to uh, probably, we'll start off with uh, a uh, one and a half inch tall text. We'll figure out what it needs to be in just a moment. And uh, on one side of the panel, I'm probably going to do something like devil dog. Uh, on the other side, U.S. Marine or Marines, uh, either way. But uh, let's start out with the Devil Dog, and I want to do a vertical text. So I'm just gonna, you know, type in my letters and hit Enter, and just keep, you know, typing my word in, but hitting Enter after every letter, letter, so it moves down in that kind of uh, vertical motion. I'll get everything centered with each other in just a minute, um, and uh, so. Let's go back and finish that up. So I'm going to create my space and then D O G. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, we're going to go center justification. So the letters are all centered on each other. And I'm going to hit uh, close on this and I'll hit the number nine key to rotate that 90 degrees uh, so that I can lay it into place and everything. All right, I'm gonna go back into that text. I think I wanna go bold with this, so I'll go bold letters uh, with that. And a Times New Roman, that's okay. Uh, you know, I might want something a little bit more blocky, if you will. Uh, and um, let's, uh, let's see what a, a, a nice uh, block text would be. I could do a stencil, kind of like a, a military stencil look to it. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. But I think I'm gonna go with a Rockwell. Let me go up to the R's here. Kind of a Rockwell bold block text, you know? Uh, just something, you know, that's beefy. Uh, or, you know, I could go with something like Saddlebag. Let's see, let me think here, let me think, let me think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with a Rockwell um, bold. I'll go with a Rockwell bold. Let me get back to a Rockwell extra bold. We'll go with something like that. And uh, let's see here. Uh, max out the RAM on the computer and that'll help. Mark, I'll have to do that. I'll have to go in and uh, uh, because I've got, I, I, I just, uh, as far, if you're talking about memory sticks, uh, I'm at uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I filled in all my slots in my computer, the one computer I'm using here for this 
uh, was 32 gig. Right, 32 gig, yep. Yeah. Uh, and um, let's see here. Do you have the stock? Wait, do you have the stock that big just for these classes? Uh, smaller the stock size, the easier the processor. Uh, or 25 year working uh, with all brands. Hoorah! <laughs> Hoorah! There you go. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the. Um, uh, do I have the stock that big as far as the material? No, that's uh, that's the stock size that uh, my general setup. Uh, when I create models for customers, I create them on a 24 by 24. They can size them to whatever they want. But in here, I have this laid out because I have the front of my cabinet uh, right here. Uh, I have the front of my cabinet kind of laid out for a visual. But each one of the items are going to be on their own individual board of different sizes, right? So that's the one thing I do love about the new sheets feature and stuff. All right, so uh, I'm going to create a new layer here. And uh, on this layer, uh, we're going to have my left side frame board and another layer for the right side frame board. Uh, and I'm gonna take these vectors here. Let's close the text tool for a minute. These vectors here, I'm gonna go ahead and move them over to uh, the left side frame board. And I'll go ahead and create the uh, VCARV toolpath for this and the inlay toolpath. So um, uh, for this, you know, when I cut this inlay, it's going to create kind of radius edges, and I'm aware of that. So, uh, uh, and everything, and unless I do it as a V carve type toolpath, right, which there's no need for this. Um, but uh, I could, what my plan is, is to have my walnut board with the center be a maple inlay center. Pretty thick uh, inlay, probably maybe three eighths of an inch thick. Nice inlay center. And then uh, I could do another inlay of walnut, a V-carve inlay, and that walnut could be the text, the devil dog, right? So I have that nice contrast. I think that would look really sharp. Um, or I could just carve the devil dog into the maple. I could paint it and color it. Or I could do kind of a raise where it's almost like a three-dimensional uh, devil dog in that maple uh, and stuff. There's a lot of different approaches that I could take depending on what I think would look more badass, right? Uh, you know, I guess you could kind of, uh, you know, uh, put it that way, right? You know, which is going to look the best. Um, I think, you know, having a maple board with, or a walnut board, nice dark walnut with a maple inlay and then dark walnut uh, text inlaid, V carve inlaid in there, that would look really sharp uh, and stuff. So, Let's uh, let's do that. So I'm gonna use the, uh, for my main uh, text here and everything, right? Um, I'm going to do just a standard, or my main border, my main block, I'm gonna do just a standard pocket inlay. Uh, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be pretty thick. I want a pretty decent uh, thickness of an inlay on this board. So I'm gonna go 3 eighths of an inch thick with this. Um, and uh, I'm going to use a combination of a quarter inch end mill and an eighth inch end mill, kind of reduce my radius on my corners a little bit. So uh, let's go down to my quarter inch end mill and let's also add in my eighth. There as well so uh, we'll do those two and uh, we'll calculate that now what that means is um, on my uh, frame sides and everything what that means is is my main pocket is going to be cleared out with the quarter inch end mill right and um, once it's cleared out 
my eighth inch end mill is gonna come and do kind of touch up the corners to reduce those radiuses and stuff. It may do a singular profile cut around the outer edge, but I pretty much doubt that. Uh, I very much doubt that um, in everything. So my, you know, uh, when that quarter inch end mill comes in and cuts that out, my eighth inch end mill is it is going to do a uh, it'll do just a profile on that and just touching up those inside edges so uh, let's preview that toolpath and everything so what this means is uh, because it's kind of creating that eighth inch radius and all when I cut out the mail part I either need to you know I'm gonna cut the part out uh, not on a CNC my maple piece I'm gonna cut that on my table saw but I may need to do kind of a eighth inch radius on the corners or do some light sanding to get it to be a nice fit. If I wanted to be an exact fit, then I could throw that on the table and use my eighth inch bit to do a profile cut on the mail and everything uh, to cut that out, right? Okay, all right guys, we are going to, uh, we're at an hour and a half. We're gonna finish up this side inlay. We're gonna call it a day. And it's going to be rinse and repeat for the other side. The other text on the other side is going to say probably uh, U.S. Marines or just Marines, depending on how much room I have. Uh, but let's look and lay out the V-carve inlay real quick. So with the V-carve inlay uh, for the, uh, the text, the Devil Dog, uh, this is going to be the final toolpath for tonight. We're going to go V-carve toolpath. My female is going to be uh, cut... Um, out of a uh, cut depth of 0.2. I am using a 60 degree V-bit, a quarter inch 60 degree V-bit, and the cutting height, the blade, the cutting height of that bit is 0.21. I do not want to exceed my router bit's cutting height. So if I, if I needed to go 0.3 for my inlay or whatever, then the 60 degree 0.25 V-bit is not the bit that I would use for that. I may have to use my 60 degree half inch V bit or my 90 degree half inch V bit. But the quarter inch 60 degree V bit I'm using only has a cutting blade length, the angle of, uh, before it goes into the shank, of 0.21. So the maximum depth I can cut with it before, you know, uh, crashing my shank in is 0.2, and that's what I want to use, and, and that's what I use anyway. So we're going to calculate that, okay? And, um, that is going to uh, be the, uh, you know, the uh, female cut uh, of that uh, of that text. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to actually create a third sheet um, for my mail that does because I don't need to waste a three quarter inch piece of material. Um, I can, uh, you know, uh, cut this both sides out of a piece of three eighths inch thick because I'm only cutting 0.2 inches deep, uh, and so I can resaw for me. I can resaw a three quarter inch or one of my one inch boards or something into two boards, and I'm not doing any waste. So I'm going to create another sheet. Uh, let's go to the sheets here. I'm going to create a new sheet, and this one is going to be for my mail inlays. Uh, it's going to have the, uh, uh, they don't need to be the size of, um, they only need to be really about uh, three and a half inches wide, so a one by four basically, you know, uh, you know, around uh, 23, 24 inches long. So for this board, my Mel inlays, this board is going to be 24 inches long. Uh, it's going to be three and a half inches wide and uh, it's only going to be three eighths of an inch thick. Okay. Um, I could go a half inch or three eighths. Three eighths is going to be fine for me. Uh, still the same setup, nothing's changed there. Okay. I want uh, this to be the active layer, but right now for right now I need to go back to my uh, frame sideboard and make it active because I need to take these two vectors right here 
and copy them to my Mail Inlay Sheet. Now I can come over here because the mill, let's get this uh, centered on the board. We'll use our alignment tool for that. Get it centered on the material. Our mill uh, needs to be mirrored. Uh, you know, when you're doing a V carve inlay, uh, we need to surround the, uh, you know, our text because that's what's going to be inlaid is just the text, but we need to put a boundary around it. Uh, the boundary, I can use this rectangle as the boundary. I can even size it down a bit. It doesn't need to be that big of a boundary um, and everything, you know, whatever the case may be. I don't care about that. What I do care is that this text is inverted. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to mirror this. Uh, I'm going to flip it. Uh, we don't want to create a mirror copy. I'm going to flip it vertically. And then I'm going to create a second V carve tool path. Okay, for the mail inlay, and I'm on the mail inlay board here, VCarve Toolpath, and this one is going to have a start depth of 0.18 with a flat depth of 0.02. These two numbers, you could do 0.1 and 1, 0.15 and 0.05, whatever the case may be, you typically want a larger start depth with a smaller flat depth because I want a very minimal glue gap. And if you're just new to this and not understanding anything, there are videos. Uh, watch the videos from Becky at Vetric uh, on YouTube uh, where she talks about V-Carve inlays uh, and explains it with a PowerPoint presentation and does a very good explanation. I've talked about V-Carve inlays in past classes and all. We're not going to get into that. Um, but uh, we want to minimize when the two parts fit together. I want to have some glue space, but I don't want a big air void pocket, right? So I want more of a start depth than I do on a flat depth when it's cutting these male parts out. And that's gonna make those two parts, when I stick that male part into the female, it's gonna fit much better. I'm still using the same 60 degree V-bit. Uh, we're gonna select both our text and our boundary here. Always gotta have that boundary selected. We're gonna calculate that tool path, okay? And Brooks Martin, yeah, Becky did a great job uh, you know, uh, with that tutorial on V-Carve Inlay. Uh, she thoroughly explains it, and uh, in my examples of a V-carve inlay instructions and videos, I, I reference Becky's, uh, you know, diagrams and layouts and stuff. So she she did a great job. So on this V-carve inlay here, um, we could let the V-bit kind of do all the work. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, all the work here cleaning out around these letters. But I'm going to speed up the time. I'm going to add in an end mill. I'll just use an eighth inch end mill. So my V-bit's not trying to do all the work. Uh, I'll just throw in an eighth inch end mill in there and calculate that. So I have my end mill bit will uh, do the um, first pocketing, you know, clearing out around that text and everything. Okay. And then my V-bit, my 60 degree V-bit will come in and do all the nice decorative edge work and everything. Now on these four sides, left, right, top, and bottom, those get cut off. With a bandsaw, handsaw, I don't care, but uh, we need to cut these lips off. Uh, cut them off. Um, and uh, that way that piece can get glued into the female pocket on our other uh, panel, you know, so it can get glued in here. Uh, we don't want those sides and everything in there, so those get trimmed off. Uh, we have our vector that kind of, uh, you know, uh, allowed us to flatten out around those areas and all, but these sides, bottom, top, left, and right, they get trimmed off. You know, all you have is the raised letters and the backer board. Nice clamping pressure, you know, put some weight on it, clamp on it, let it sit for overnight, 24 hours at least, you know. Uh, it usually sets up in a couple of hours, but really you want to kind of let it sit overnight. And uh, this is gonna, for me, the, this is gonna be cut out of a piece of walnut. So I'm going to have, if you will, on this side panel here, let me shut this door real quick. Uh, let me get rid of this circle, it's gonna throw me off. Uh, here, I'll just hide this door for a second. <clears throat> what we're gonna have here, let's go in and paint this. Uh, let's call this like a uh, walnut, right? 
And then on this uh, panel, uh, let me close this tool. On this part here, let me get into the component there. Uh, we're going to have a, oops, offset about like that. And let me paint inside that area. Uh, give me something that looks somewhat like a maple. Okay. So we're going to have this inlay area here. And then we're going to have um, uh, let's do tools, 3D text. <clears throat> uh, alignment center, text height, uh, let's go one and a half inches, extruded, uh, really none on the extrusion, but And of course, uh, let's get that in there. And let's rotate that, bear with me a second. Uh, Q, 90 degrees, M for move. Okay, so on the uh, you know side, we'll have something that looks similar to that, right? Uh, so we're gonna have a nice beautiful grain walnut board with a really nice uh, maybe curly maple or something on the side uh, and then we're gonna have uh, some more of that walnut uh, inlaid in there uh, in a nice bulky text I didn't change the font on this but that's kind of give you just a visual of what the side piece is gonna look like okay and then on the other side of uh, the board uh, it's going to say U.S. Marines now uh, and everything, you know, same way, right? So it's going to have kind of that look. All right. Uh, that's what we're going to do there. That's what we're going to inlay. Uh, so uh, we've got our, you know, on our frame side here, we've got our devil dog. We've created the male inlay for that. Um, and on my... Uh, left side frame board I have those vectors you know uh, set there but I need these vectors notice when I turn off the left side frame board vectors it turns those off as well and that's fine because that is my left side I don't care that it's, it's on the same layer I don't need to really break it down any more than that I could break it down to melon lay left melon lay right that kind of stuff but it's fine to have them on the same layer because now I would turn those off make sure that my right side was active and coming into my uh, sheets, my frame side, uh, frame side is already active. Um, I could, let's turn on this layer. I'm gonna steal this vector right here. So copy to layer, uh, right side, there we go. Turn that left side off. And now I could put in my, my US Marines, oops. Uh, once again, I'll use uh, the draw text box is fine here for this. Uh, we'll go US, oops, not that way, Lane. Um, let's not use the draw text within a text box. Let's use just regular text so I can rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, we'll go US space. M A R I N. Oops. And I probably I don't know if I I don't know if I had the U S in there. Just Marines, right? I could probably just go with just Marines, um, and everything, uh, because if I no, it'll fit. It'll fit, that's good. I'll do US Marines. Um, yeah, 
I wonder if I should put the period after the U and the S on the inlay. I don't know. Because it's going vertical. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, so I will center that up on the board. And we will leave that here because basically from here it's the same steps. We would copy this over to the mail inlay sheet, right? We would make that mail inlay sheet active. We would center this. We'll use the alignment tool for that. Center to the material. And on my border, I don't, again, uh, I don't need it to, the, the border is not really used. This is gonna be just used for the inlay. And um, that's fine. And with those vectors, that would be my mail inlay for the word Marines. It's gonna be the same, you know, 0.1 and 2, but I need to invert. I need to mirror this. I'm gonna flip it vertically. There we go. And uh, we would create that tool pass. So that would be the mail cut being cut out of my little 3 8 inch walnut again, you know, for that. And for the other sheet, for the other sheet, come back over here. Uh, this, oops, not that, uh, just this right here is going to be my female and it's going to be a zero cut depth 0.2 0 0.2 for the flat depth uh no end mill just my v bit and this will be my right side fem inlay uh 60 deg v bit and calculate that right so now we've got both inlay tool pass created uh, we've got the female pocket we've got the male inlay created uh, so both sides are done uh, left and right sides of our frame board uh, our medallion let's see how our medallion made out uh, there we go it finally finished see if you give it some time it'll finish right um, the uh, 3D finish cut. I'm going to turn down my preview simulation quality for speed's sake. Uh, the female cut. This is the eighth inch bit. So the medallion's done as well. Uh, all we have to do is the door panels and um, some inside stuff. Right? But uh, so when this rough cut gets or this uh, 3d finished get, cut gets in here uh, we'll zoom in and look at it and then I'll show you what the second cut does and then we will call it an evening for the night because uh, we are one hour 47 minutes in and I, I've said this three times now but we're done here after this all right so let's come in and zoom in and you can see around the uh, anchor and globes here uh, there's some tool marks and stuff now I do have the resolution for the preview turned down but you can still see these tool marks and everything in here uh, and uh, especially in the eagle and stuff. Now the rest machining tool path is going to come back where all these blue lines are. Uh, it's going to come and clean up all of those areas with the uh, smaller bit. Now uh, you can start as you watch um, you'll see as it starts to kind of get into these areas, you'll start to see the detail. Now it is still gonna be pixelated because I am using a low resolution for the preview for speed's sake or else it would take a while for it to preview. But you can see the change take place where that bit is cleaning up. Now it's gonna be pixelated in the preview uh, somewhat because again, I'm in a low resolution, but you can see where that bit comes in. Now if I wanted to even get in uh, you know smaller detail and stuff I could go back and add that 32nd inch bit in there I could even take the 16th inch bit out put the 32nd inch bit and have it do that but it'd probably be better if I did you know broke it down into sections and stuff um, so we have our medallion here uh, the only piece the final tool path for the medallion is just going to be the profile cutout so with that vector selected, profile cutout, cutting all the way through the material uh, using a, I'll use a quarter inch end mill. 
on the outside of the line uh, and uh, we will uh, calculate this and here's let me just say this here's where the little tip and trick I'll give you a little tip and trick before we leave on this line cut right here okay um, with the regular like g-code inch tap tool path or even with the arcs inch in, in some cases and all uh, mostly with without the arcs um, this circle cut even though it looks like your router is cutting you know nice and smooth it's going around it's going line segment by line segment each one of those lines is kind of a stopping point you know it's got to go from here to here to here to here to here all the way around that circle and uh, you know with that uh, especially on 3d model cuts and everything uh, you can get a really rough cutting edge uh, and stuff a uh, little trick uh, a little tip to that is if we go into our model or I'm sorry our drawing tools here we have a tool here that's called a curve fit tool um, and you can kind of see all these little segment dots and everything here you know where it's going from here to here from there to there and all the way around uh, I can turn this into circular arcs uh, and I can I'll just use a ten thousandths of an inch uh, tolerance and everything in there and I could replace the existing vector and clean that up and now I've created now my bits gonna run smoother going around there instead of segment by segment it's gonna run smoother coming around there and that will help clean up the edge outside profile of my model cut uh, you know that's already you know somewhat kind of you know gonna be rough and all um, secondly now that I've done that the third thing that I want to do because I want a nice clean edge I don't want the witness marks on the sides uh, that I have to sand because I'm gonna be inlaying this medallion into the door so I want a nice clean cut so the second tip that I'm going to do is uh, on this profile cut I'm gonna use do a separate last pass and uh, my allowance this means that when it's cutting uh, the bit is gonna be cutting out a little further away from the line for the first you know uh, seven passes if you will I'm, in this case it's set up for seven passes for the first seven passes it's gonna cut away from the line by whatever my allowance I set here is and then on the final pass it's gonna do the full cut so number one you need to make sure that your bit has a long enough cutting flute to be able to do that and my materials one inch uh, my end mills got a one inch uh, cutting flute uh, so it'll be fine uh, there and everything that's important uh, and that's number one important thing or else your shank is going to be trying to cut and it doesn't cut right so I want my allowance to be just a small amount I'm gonna go about a point oh one five a little over ten thousandths of an inch uh, and uh, I'm going to calculate this toolpath um, on this final toolpath here or on this toolpath let's move over to it on the Let's see if we can tilt it a little bit on the first seven passes it's going to be cutting that ten thousandths of an inch out uh, from the line and then on that eighth and final pass it's going to be doing a full cut removing that 0.015 that fifteen thousandths of an inch no I'm sorry yeah fifteen thousandths of an inch uh, and uh, it's going to be doing it a full cut and that's going to remove the witness lines that you see on your pass steps you know if you ever if you ever look at the outside profile cut and you see these nice witness lines you can see where the bit is just stepping down and you got these like little groove marks you know at different levels uh, and everything uh, the separate last pass is going to eliminate that so number one I've smoothed out this vector and turned this vector into arc so I get nice smooth cuts versus little segment cuts you know with my CNC following those lines of g-code um, and number two um, I'm doing a separate last pass and that's gonna get rid of the witness lines and that's gonna give me a nice clean edge so that's my uh, two tips of the day uh, and uh, so we're gonna go ahead we've already calculated that and so the final uh, step of this is is to do that final cutout and you know we probably add some tabs in this but that is going to be my medallion uh, there that's gonna go into the doors 
and it's going to be attached more so to one door so that when it opens it kind of does an overlay of the other door it's going to be pretty cool all right uh mark uh also ramp plunges into the cut uh you know and that also is another way to because your plunge your bit when it goes and it cuts it at the starting point where it starts from it goes all the way around and when it gets to that starting point it drops down to the next level around next level around next level around next level and that part that it, where it's coming down not only are you getting your little stair steps you know as you go around and stuff but you're also gonna get a little bit of a burn mark where that bit is kind of dropping in that same place every single time a ramp uh, will you know you can do a nice spiral ramp into it you can do a nice smooth ramp a zigzag ramp and that's gonna allow the bit to ramp into its cut uh, and get down to that pass and all to kind of eliminate that little bit of burning and stuff and all in this case um, uh, you know I could add a ramp to it but it's gonna you know uh, uh, let's see here add a ramp and uh, for this I would probably do a nice smooth ramp uh, and I'll probably go I'm using a quarter inch end mill I'll probably go with a one inch kind of smooth ramp and calculate that in and if we come out here uh, you know this line basically these lines here as it comes in it's gonna ramp into that pass and ramp into that pass and ramp in nice smooth ramp all the way down and this ramp it looks like it's going straight down in the last line but it's actually uh, you know it's going down to each of these blue line segments right uh, and everything so you know we could add a ramp in there and that could also help and it also ramping helps extend the life of your bit and eliminate the uh, wear and tear on your bit and everything like that all right guys and girls uh, so let's wrap up with saying that we've got the tool pass created uh, for our medallion cutout for the door we still need to create the doors and those pockets for that inlay we need to create the crown molding uh, we've got the parts created uh, for our um, where are we here uh, we've got our parts created for our side frames uh, for the two inlays uh, and that we're gonna do for the nice uh, inlays for the uh, the text and everything uh, we still got to like I said lay out the doors and uh, the top and bottom of our box that's gonna get cut on the table saw you know just to size uh, we'll talk about what that size is and everything but uh, we're gonna do crown and we're gonna probably do some inside uh, you know kind of uh, decorations but that will be in the next class for tonight we're gonna end this here uh, we're two hours in one hour 57 minutes so we're gonna go ahead and say good night I hope this was helpful stick with me come back we're gonna next week we're gonna finish up I kept saying I was gonna do the tips and tricks I'll see if I can incorporate them in but uh, you got two of the tips uh, tonight uh, so uh, the curve fit tool once again last thing I'll say is that curve fit tool here uh, you know taking that line segment and everything and uh, turning it into circular arcs um, it will help kind of smooth out that line and create you know that tool path and all uh, we'll uh, we'll look at the G code uh, next week uh, we'll kind of circle back to that and we'll look at the G code so you can see the difference and stuff all right everybody thanks for hanging out with me tonight uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed that and until next time I'll see you soon see you next week We'll, uh, we'll wrap up this project uh, or get pretty close to it. See you guys.